Hello, this is the Metic Hipster, and welcome to my channel. Making this video has been a bit difficult in these unusual times of the alien geno plague COVID-19, but luckily I have my essential oils and homeopathic remedies to help boost my immune system to the virus, as I was obviously never take any kind of vaccine. Also, luckily, my numerologist and astrologist both have predicted this video will launch me into that sweet YouTube's money so that I can finally get my ergons realigned and overcome my eugenic flaws and use my steam-powered airship to explore the hollow earth. Or is it flat earth? In my research into pseudoscience for this video, I might have become a bit confused. And if we're talking about pseudoscience, that must mean that the tradition you all voted for in the last video is none other than the Society of Ether. start I'd just like to say the channel now has over whole 400 subscribers and that's pretty cool. I have a lot of fun making these videos and I'm really glad that some people seem to enjoy them so thank you for everyone for checking them out. The Society of Ether are the second youngest of the traditions and like their more recently formed virtual adept allies have their roots in a technocratic union. Their core principle is pseudoscience in the context of scientific theories that have been rejected or are not commonly accepted by the consensus. Everything from homeopathy and hypnosis to gene splicing and their namesake, Theory of Ether. Their stereotypes have changed over the years, now being a more balanced group of mad scientists, futurists, but still keeping the early flavour of airship commanding sky captains of yesteryear. They inevitably favour steampunk in its derivatives and style, making them aesthetically extremely appealing for many players. The imagery draws from Jekyll and Hyde, Rocketeer, Wild Wild West and other pulp heroes with a dash of gentleman scientists thrown in. In modern nights, plenty of etherites do not feel the need for the traditions, well, traditions, but the group attacks many technomancers and enlightened scientists, for whatever reason, do not wish to be part of the Union. To understand the history of the Society of Ether is to attempt to have a better understanding of the complex factionalism in the world of mage overall. Many May traditions who might in modern night seem distinct and with no common ground, in fact have similar shared backgrounds and underlying philosophies. Another important point is to remember that May traditions are not aligned or even formed based on foci alone. While paradigm and practice can often be important for groups of awaken to find common ground with one another, outside factors and real world politics, momentous events, personalities and leadership, or just simple fate and chance have a great impact on how mage groups are formed and align themselves within the politics of the world of darkness. I bring this up because, in a very outward way, the Society of Ether appear much more similar to the primary enemy of the mystic traditions, the technocratic union and their allies. The reason for that is that they were once a cornerstone of the emergent union, only really finding themselves aligned with the nine mystic traditions through a common enemy. In isolation, a daughter or son of Ether is nearly as opposed to the Akashics or Bivabana worldview as any black suit. There's also an interesting irony for the technocracy with the Society of Ether, that originally formed as the Order of Reason, who grew out of the mystery traditions themselves, now finding their way back into the fold. Factionalism and mage is as complex and chaotic as expected, but worth bearing in mind with the Society of Ether. That said, a short rundown of the history is as such. Finding their origins in the learnings of Atheus, a scholar of Troy and Atlantis, the predecessors of the Aetherites were mystic mages, aligned to scholarly groups such as Hermetic Houses, Choristers, and the Alilatan. The first group that could arguably be a unique ancestor of the society would be the Natural Philosophers Guild, formed in the 12th century from Hermetic mages who'd uncovered ancient teachings described above and applied them to Hermetic reason and logic to the chaotic world. This group was an early member of the Order of Reason, before being disbanded and its members dispersed into the various other conventions, with some members fleeing back to the Hermetics. As with the rest of the Order of Reason, the group who followed these ancient teachings, now called the Theory of Ether, prospered. In 1806, the students of Aethus reformed into the Voltarian Order, and when the Order of Reason was reformed into the Technocratic Union, they again renamed themselves as the Electrodyne Engineers. The Electrodyne Engineers were brash and forward-thinking, 
with the emergent fields of electro electricity, radiation, and other sources of power becoming their forte. They were often frustrated by the conservatives with their convention mates, but still used their power to help the masses push back the forces of darkness and unreason as they saw them. However, with the technocratic union's victories in the age of industrialization and colonialism, pushing back the enemies of reason into the corners and the shadows of the world, the group began to turn in on itself. The order attempted to further constrict the consensus, this time leaving the Electrodyne engineer's beloved theory of ether out in the cold. They defected en masse, joining their recent enemies, who saw through their enmity to accept them in the long vacant seat of matter on the Council of Nine. This was a great blow to the Union, but even more huge victory to the traditions. Now renamed the Sons of Aether, they brought with them a lot of intelligence and information on their old allies, and maybe without this help, the traditions would not have managed to limp into the 20th century quite as well as they did. That isn't to say everything went smooth with the traditions, however. The Aetherites had been their sworn enemies only years before, but pragmatism won out, and ultimately their hatred of each other was still not as deep as many of the traditions already had for one another, such as the Choristes and Babana, or the Akashics and the Euthanatoi. I think now it's worth mentioning one of the most infamous members of the society from their early history, the outrageous Tsar Vargo. The Tsar was a powerful Aetherite and cleanly aware of the march of technology continued as it has, humanity would develop more and more powerful weaponry, putting the future of the human race itself at risk. After pleading first with his technocratic allies, and then when the society left other etherites to embrace pacifism, he became disgusted at both groups' refusal to renounce violence and took matters into his own hands. What resulted might be the largest rule of shade, masquerade breach, veil breach in the history of the world of darkness, as in the opening year of World War I, he openly occupied the world's major cities with a vast fleet of airships and informed the governments of the world that they must concede authority over their nations to him and stop the war. He was eventually defeated by the technocracy and their army of robots, and in a move of a storyteller who think the session went too far, Paradox ordered a do-over, and he blinked out of existence not only from reality, but also from the memories of all who'd witnessed the move so gloriously supervillain it puts Osmandius to shame. Next time you're discussing with your playgroup about the alleged evil of the technocracy, remember that they have a precedent for dealing with madmen trying to take over the world with blimps. In modern nights, the tradition keeps ahead of the consensus, pushing ideas like dark matter and string theory to the limits alongside steam power and still holding to their beloved aesthetics as it's not uncommon for etherites to have fusion-powered tea kettles or use a miniaturized black hole shooting blunderbuss. The etherites have an interesting niche paradigm-wise, and one that's defined by the current consensus more than any other faction outside of the Union or maybe the Virtual Adepts. They are devoted technomancers that see the consensus not as a tree to grow and be nurtured, but rather a rocket to blast outside of the conventional norms. They desire to be just outside of what is conceivably possible to the masses, and this gives them more leeway than most of their allies with effects. But when Paradox does strike, it manifests as lab explosions and inopportune equipment failure. To me, there are two kinds of etherites focus-wise. Those who are one step ahead of the consensus, perhaps turning a scientific theory into reality, or embracing hard science fiction ideas, and those who've been left behind by the consensus, hanging on to theories that have been disproven decades ago, but still making them work. For the first time, you can take inspiration from modern science, taking a discipline or theory and pushing it to what we might conceive it might become in 100 years or 200. Disciplines like cloning, dark matter theory, or environmentally friendly technology are all known of in studies, but have perhaps not yet reached their full potential. For the latter group, look at old disproven schools of science, like the titular ether theory, early atomic theory, hollow earth theory, etc. Just please don't have a practice of eugenics, even though it fits really well into this category of a disproven science that used to be considered the norm, just don't be that person. Do however feel free to embrace the style of these theories, using shined up versions of sextants and mason jars full of null gas. I cannot stress enough how much you will not be invited to the after work din gen by your fellow etherites unless you have at least one set of leather clockwork goggles. An etherite will usually take the sphere of matter as a poor core part of their practice, giving them the ability to scientifically affect the material world, but will often have other spheres such as forces to console electricity and gravity, life if they have a biological practice, and prime for more energy manipulation are common. More outlandish etherites might experiment with temporal distortion or even time travel, multiverse theory for the sphere of spirit, 
and teleporting beam technology for the use of correspondent. Explore any and all science fiction you can when dreaming up the effects of your technomancer scientist. The Exciety of Ether are an extremely varied tradition, made so by the breadth of their practice, but still a group with a powerful sense of self. Hated by the Union as traitors and still viewed with suspicion by traditionalists, even as more mages from mystic groups incorporate technology into their paradigm of practices. But the Aetherites are still a famous and powerful group within the world of mage and a popular one to play outside of them. Thank you for coming and watching my second video on the nine mystic traditions. As with before, please leave a comment below with the group I should look at next and I'll be sure to make that video. Thank you very much for listening. This has been The Hermetic Hipster. Thank you.